I want to talk a little about fantasy. I live in a country, America, in which survival for most people is not a grind, it's not a daily concern. And so the citizens of this country turn to fantasy to occupy their lives and pass their time. They seek fantasy and they embrace it. They are dazzled by it and they like to be dazzled. I will call this little talk a tale of three cities. The first city is Hollywood or Los Angeles or California, the state whose motto is Eureka, the cry of discovery, the discovery of gold, the discovery of fame and fortune, whether by a star on the screen or a techno magnate in Silicon Valley. Hollywood, Tinseltown, is built on fantasy, on make-believe. It's the soul of the place, the motive force that keeps its engines churning. The fantasy in Hollywood takes the form of a wish, where you close your eyes and wish that something wonderful would happen, or it's your birthday and you make a wish, blow out the candles and see if the wish comes true. That's Hollywood, when you wish upon a star. Genies come out of lamps and grant wishes. Hollywood is a genie. You can go there and become a star. A star! Or you can sit in a darkened theater and watch one of its magical productions, which will quite literally, which will be quite literally fantastic, highly imaginative, more than you could have wished. Hollywood, in the reality of it, the business, is also merciless, unspeakably cruel. I see a worker down in some huge boiler room. The door of the furnace is open. A fire is bur blazing within. The worker is feeding that fire, and he does it by shoveling in a constant supply of dreams from this pile of dreams that people have brought to Hollywood. As there is no shortage of dreams, the fire burns on brightly. The second city on our fantasy tour is Las Vegas, more playground really than city. Here it's all about money, and luck is king. Every game that every casino offers can be broken down into odds, but the one incontestable fee, as it were, like the bookie's vigorish, is the margin the house makes, which I believe runs about a healthy 15%. When Las Vegas got started, it was glittery for sure, but it was more of a rough and tumble gambling place that everyone knew was run by the mob. So if you mess with them in any way, try to cheat or improve your chances by counting cards, you could find your way out to a hole in the desert sands. The new and improved Las Vegas, the sanitized, shall we say, Las Vegas, is more docile but no less efficient in separating the visitors from their money, getting their cut. It's family friendly now, with more shows than ever, and if you try to cheat, the surveillance system will catch you, and they will turn you over to their lawyers, which is about the equivalent of a hole in the desert sands. The great fantasy in Las Vegas is that you will beat the odds and get lucky, win a fortune. Every so often someone does, and this is the best possible publicity for the casinos. When people see a winner or even hear about one, that makes it real. Not so flimsy a miracle after all, it could happen to them. You can't win if you don't play, and they come in droves to play in Las Vegas. The third and final city where fantasy rules is Washington, D.C. This may not seem as obvious as the other two, but a little reflection is all it takes to see that Washington runs on make-believe. The candidates who become elected officials are fantastic creatures to their core, and what they peddle is hope. Hope that things will improve. Tomorrow will be better. The war will end. The violence will not erupt. The great fantasy in Washington is that the politicians are in control. Helping to create this fantasy, which is exactly like the great and terrible Oz, is the set design, the so very impressive buildings of the government, the monuments to leaders, and those people wearing bulletproof suits, simply looking important with titles yet and getting away, for the most part, with that illusion. Of course, truth is, they are in control of very little, practically nothing. They're, they're there to react and look all concerned when something happens and go into committee meetings to take care of it, or at least make sure it doesn't happen again. Fantasy, 
We see it clearly in Hollywood and Las Vegas. In Washington, it's not so easily discerned, but that's because its denizens spend most of their time and energy putting the finishing touches on this illusion of control, fortifying it so that it doesn't appear to be an illusion at all. They really do know what they're doing, and they know what is best for this country. Poppycock. Fantasy.